Hey guys, it's May May. And if you've been here for any length of time, you will know this is one of my very favorite things. And it came back this year after being discontinued. And I'm so excited because I had so many ideas I wanted to share, but I didn't have them. But now I do. So we're going to do a parted video. Now, what that means is you're going to have part one, which is today. And I'm not sure how far it's going to go because we've got a lot of parts to do. Now, this is packaging that comes in um, the album. You may or may not need it. You might want to hang on to it. You might want to use it for something. It's a cool shape. You see that shape and you never know. I'm going to hang on to it because I feel like it might come in handy at some point in time. So I'm just going to put that aside. Now, if you've never used one of these albums, I want to take just a second to tell you this, okay? I believe they have a front and a back. If you notice, when you open this guy up, do you see how flat he lays like this? And you will have seen that's where the label came from off the top. He lays super flat. If I turn him around and I open him this way, do you see I get this resistance? So I feel like they have a front and a back. And the front for me is this because it lays super, super flat. Now, I'm going to be altering every one of these pages in a different way. Um, everyone made at least two of them. OK, so what I'm going to do today, what I would normally do when I start an album is I would just cover everything and then just decorate because that's what I love about these albums. But I'm going to step it up a notch. And what that means is I'm not going to do everything all at once. I'm going to focus on a page at a time and a project at a time, because I've got some things I want to do, which I think are going to be cool. So let's start with page number one and how I want to lay it out. Now, if I want to turn this page in any other direction, I want to show you this. I love how much page we have. And here's what I mean. Do you see how that goes all the way to the spine right here? This page is the full length. Now, if you want this to go in different directions, like if you want it to go this way, okay, and you want everything to open smooth and close smooth, you might consider trimming this edge down to give yourself a little bit of room over there, okay? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start this front with something I did in my fall album, and I really, really loved it. So what I'm going to do is turn this side into a pocket. If you remember, what we did was we took this piece, folded it in half, and made a pocket out of it. That's what I'm going to do today. And I'm not going to score it. I'm going to show you. You could score it. You could put this in your scoreboard and do all that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this edge of my page, and I'm going to fold it over to here. And just line it up with the score line. I don't want to go over the score line. I need this to move freely. Okay. Then I'm going to press. Now this paper is so sturdy. All I'm going to do is work this down just like this with my bone folder. Okay. So that's all I need to do to get a nice fold. And you'll see it's a nice fold. But the thing I want you to really pay attention to is how easily this will fold because I didn't go over the score mark. Now I'm going to press this down because I noticed a while ago it wasn't very creased anyway. It wasn't super flat. And now this is going to become a pocket because I'm going to glue this side and this side. And then I will have a pocket here that opens like this. Now this is just one that I'm going to do. Now I'm going to close the pocket up now, but I'm not going to put any paper down. Okay. Because I'm not exactly sure how I want this all to lay out. So I'm just going to go ahead and put glue here and put glue here. And then that will be my pocket. And I don't really mind if it has a little bit of a gap at the top and I'll show you what I mean. Let me get some of this extra glue off. I'm constantly getting too much glue on these projects. Get that bottom to seal down. So see at the top here where it's a little bit loose, I'm okay with that because I'm gonna put some things inside of it and I don't mind if it has a little bit of movement up there, a little bit of room. Sometimes I do, but for this one I won't because what I put in there will probably be pretty thick. And so that is how I'm going to edit page one. Okay, so we have, when we open this up, we have this flap now that will be a pocket. I will go back, and maybe, let me say this. In the past, I've taken a punch and done like a thumb hole here. But what I'm thinking of doing up here, I may not need to do it. So that's why I'm saying I want to look at every page individually. All right. So now this guy can go here. And the cool thing is, I'm going to go ahead and crease this down as well. And you can think about this too. When you get this at home, it's okay to work your creases in. All right. The cool thing about this page is this guy can go either direction. Even if somebody's just looking at my album and they close it up and they put him in the wrong way, like maybe I have him designed to go the other way, it won't matter because he's not going to affect the opening and closing of my book in any way because of where he lives. Okay, so we'll put it back to the front for now. 
Now this page, I have a plan and we'll see what's going to happen. I may need to score it. I don't know. I want to create a door that opens with a pocket. Okay. And I can put the pocket to the front if I want, or I can put the pocket to the inside. I'm sort of leaning to putting the pocket to the inside because I can create a closure that will keep whatever I put in it inside. And I want to show you what this will look like. Okay. So let me get a ruler for measurement. Now, because this is my album and I can do anything I want to do, I can just play with it and decide what size I want things. One thing I do think would be neat, this page from score to score is a little over eight inches. So I'm just going to say eight. Okay. Because by the time you put the scores in, that's about what you've got workable space. But the album itself is six, um, six and a quarter tall. The pages are. So let's see what happens if I do a six and a quarter by six and a quarter fold. <laughs> it sounds crazy. Let me show you what I mean. And then it'll make sense. I'm going to come to the top and I'm going to make a mark at six and a quarter. And then I'm going to come down here and make a mark at six and a quarter. And then I think... Let me connect these because I'm not really sure if I need to put this into the scoreboard or not. One thing you can do when you're connecting your lines to make sure it's super straight at the bottom, use the grid on your ruler to square up at the bottom as well. So if your line is going straight here and you're pretty close here, you're going to see you'll get a straight line when you trace it. Now, what I want to do with this is I want this line to fold in. OK, and that way I end up with a square page area. Let's score that to be safe because I'm not just kind of forcing it into a pocket and I want it to fold exactly in a certain way. Let's do this. So I'm going to put it into my scoreboard and I'm going to put the pencil mark on my six inch line that I've marked with marker. So I know I'm on the right line and let's score. Now I don't need to score front and back of this. This is thick paper, but I don't need to score front and back because I'm only turning this over. All right. Now to get a good fold, I'm going to use this top piece to my advantage. I'm going to start this fold and I'm going to push that up there and just check that I'm staying straight. So using that straight edge up there to my advantage. All right. So now we don't need this. And what I'm going to do is turn this into a pocket. We just need to glue two sides. So I'm going to add glue here. You could do this with sticky except... If you do sticky tape, remember it never dries. So anything you slide in and out of this pocket could stick all the, you know, every time it slides in and out. Now I'm going to press this out. And if that glue comes out, I'm perfectly fine with that. The reason I want to press it is I really want it to stay. And again, you can just grab your cloth and wipe that away. But I want that to stay down. And I'm going to crease, crease, crease. And I'm even going to rub here because art glitter glue likes pressure. Let's press that down. Now, what I love about what we've created here now is we've created a new page. So it's short here. See how it's short? And that's, that'll be great because we can put um, all kinds of decorator items here. But we've created a pocket here and we can put a closure for this. And look at this pretty space we've made. Again, just using the album itself to make all our little edits. So we have this page now. And now we have this one that opens with the pocket. Now, for the last one, we have a couple options, okay? We have a lot of options. We could take this page, do it the opposite of the way we just did the first one, and have it fold this way with a pocket. We could do that. We could turn this into a full pocket, which is kind of where I'm leaning, like taking this guy, gluing it down on three sides, and making it a pull-out pocket here. We could add more to it, more flips and flaps. I'm not adding more flips and flaps to these pages because of what I'm going to be doing in the spine. I don't think I need that in here. So let me decide what we're going to do with this one. So I remember being in a class with Janine from 49 and Market, and she did something like this, and I thought it was really cool. She took this page in the middle, and she took this score line. I think I showed you all this in the fall album. She took this edge. She folded it down to this edge, okay, and it made a flap in the middle of the book. I could do that if I wanted to. If you haven't seen that, check out my fall album. Because of something I'm putting here, I don't really want to add bulk to the center. So I'm not going to do that one. So here's what I think I'm going to do. So you know how earlier we made a mark six and a quarter out this way? Let's do that again. I'm going to make that same mark six and a quarter. 
So I'll mark here and I'll go to the bottom and do six and a quarter here. And that is cutting off, is that two inches? That's cutting off in between. So that's one and seven eighths. Okay. So we're going to cut that. So I'm going to get my trimmer. Don't panic. I don't think I've lost it. I might have. Oops. You can see this from my project today. <laughs> All right. So let's put this in to our trimmer on this end. This is about where I want it. I want to see if that's one and seven eighths back here. And it is. So let's just do one and seven eighths off of the end. I'm going to cut. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. It's just paper. We can always put it back in some way, which we are probably going to kind of do. I'll show you. All right. So what I'm going to do on this page is put this guy inside. So where he was a pocket on this side in our last edit, I'm going to glue this one down here. OK, now I'll tell you something. If you have her 49 and market black paper that matches this, you don't have to do this. You could just make a piece and put it in here. But I'm wanting to edit this page down and I'm wanting it to have a little more activity um, or interactiveness. So that's why I'm doing this. All right. So I'm going to glue this down on three sides. Remember, avoid your score mark. You don't want to get over that score mark because you won't get a good pocket. You'll have trouble opening and closing the page if you do. So I don't even mind if you come back almost an eighth of an inch away. You've got plenty of room in this book. So give yourself some space with that piece. Get that all glued in. Wipe all my excess glue away. And press that down. Now notice I did not pinch this. I want it to lay pretty flat. So whatever goes in there stays. And now what we've got on this page, we kept our length. But you can see here we've got this piece. And we can play around down here and do some kind of closure. If we want to add a magnet, we can add a piece, something decorative. Won't that be pretty? I think that it will. Or I could let this be a pocket page. I could turn this one back and put it here and just let it be sort of a, a shorter page if I wanted to. And we'll see as we get going. All right. So those are the edits I'm making to the pages. So let's walk through one more time. OK, this first page is going to have a pocket flap like this. Our second page is going to have a flap like this that has a pocket in it. And then our last page has a flap like this with a pocket on the side. Pretty cool, right? And that's just using her already assembled book. All right. Now for the part where it gets a little crazy. So this is the paper collection I'm using. This came in months ago and I have not gotten to play with the joyful version. I think this is so pretty. And so I'm going to go ahead and do something. I'm going to pick my cover background my spine background and my back. And when I say background, that means I may add to it, but I want to make sure I don't use my favorite pages inside. So that I'm going to cover really quick. So for my cover, I'm going to use this kind of neutral green. I think this will make it really easy for me to add stuff later, depending on what I want to put on there. I'm also going to use this plaid on the side. I just think that is so cute there. And I'm going to use the same green on the back. So my front and my back, will all match. Now I will say this to you. If you're not sure what you're going to do on your cover, and I'm really not sure about my cover yet, I think since I have these cut, I'm going to put them aside. And then that way, if I want to glue anything underneath them or anything before I put them down, like maybe I want to glue a ribbon around behind this page before I glue it, I can. So now that I have them, I know not to use them somewhere else. So I'm going to store them right up here. So later, if I lose them, you can tell me they're at the top right hand side of my desk because y'all know I will probably lose them. But something I do want to do is I want to go ahead and put this piece down. The reason is we're going to make a pretty fun edit. I think it's a pretty fun edit. Now, this is something y'all don't do see me do a whole lot in these albums. This is some of Eileen's double sided tape. I'm going to use this for this piece that I'm putting down. And the reason is I really need it to stick every inch of the way. Okay. Every section of it needs to stick. So I'm going to use, this is a scrap piece I had left over from another project. I like to hang on to them because they come in handy for stuff like this. I'm going to press that down. Then I'm going to go back to my release paper and just remember, use the slick side for this and we'll put it back down. And then that allows me to press and then I can cut this away. I had a sliver hanging over the side, this little sliver, and it will matter in the finished product. So I want to make sure I got that off. And it looks like I have a tiny bit down here as well. So let's get that one. All right. So we can place this down. You'll see why I wanted to overprotect this um, when we make our little edit. Don't you like when I give you all the little things to wait for? I know. I could just be more open about it so you don't have to wait. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Put this guy down. 
I'm being super careful. Place him down. All right, I went a little low. I'm not going to stress about it. There's a little difference here and there. By the time I'm done, it probably won't even notice. You won't notice. All right, the other day, I was watching on Instagram, and I was watching We Are Makers, the um, the folks that are known for this guy, <laughs> or We Are Memory Keepers. I was watching them do something, and they made a book. They made one um, from scratch with the little chipboard and everything. And they did a cool edit that made me think about something else. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take some of my eyelets um, and I'm going to use, which one do I want to use? Do I want to use white with this paper? I think the white will be pretty. All right. I'm going to need six eyelets. You really got to hang in for this one because this one's going to be, if this works, it's going to be cool. Let me say that. This might not be the one you want to make along with me. This might be the one you want to watch me do and see how it goes. I'm going to use six of the eyelets. Okay. Now, I'm going to be punching into this spine, and I want to show you what the ones I'm going to be punching into, okay? Got adhesive everywhere there. I'm not going to punch the front, so I'm not going to be punching into this spine, okay? I'm going to punch into the second spine, the third spine, and the fourth spine section, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this page is shut. And this is where I'm going to start punching. On my crocodile, I'm going to use the larger hole because that's what fits my eyelets. And I took my little guide on the side and I moved him down to three and three quarters. Um, is that three quarters? Yeah. I moved him down to three quarters of an inch because this will give you a full inch if you want it. So I, this little guide just slides and you use this little um, wheel right here to tighten it up, this little screw. So I have it at three quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do, don't be nervous. It's super fun, okay? I'm going to take my crocodile and I'm going to put it in until it stops at that three-quarter mark. And I'm eyeball centering this, which you really don't have to eyeball it too much because this guy only fits um, pretty much exactly between. So I've got him three-quarters in and I'm going to punch. And where this hole is, let me show you. Let me get this guy out now. Now where this hole is is far enough up to not be a problem. It's not going to weaken anything. And this chipboard is so thick, it's not going to weaken anything either. But you see why you want to go ahead and cover this edge? Because you do want your decorative paper underneath it. Okay, so let's go back. We've done one side. We've done this one. Let's take it and let's put it in again. Press it all the way up into your guide, to your little groove. Eyeball center it and squeeze. And that gets our next hole. And now, I'm going to triple, triple check. All right. So I know this is the front spine that I'm not doing. This is the one I am doing. And now I'm going to open it and do this one as well. Same process all the way up, centered and punch. Then on the other end, same process. The way we're going to use these, if they're not perfectly centered, it really won't be the end of the world. If this guy gets stuck, take your pokey tool and just pop him out. Now, let me show you something. You could stop here if you wanted. Do you see that? You have two holes and that's probably plenty unless you're going to do what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to do one more, but let me show you this, okay? I did one with four. This is where I did every single spine area as a test. I just want to see how it looked. And I didn't love this one. I felt like the one on the end did not look good to me, okay? So I know I'm going to be a little off center when I do this, but it's not going to bother me, I don't think. If it does bother you, stop with two, all right, to keep them pretty centered. But I'm going to do that third one because I want to use it to add something to the book. All right, so I'm going to open it up. Let me make sure I'm not at the front. And I was. I almost did it. Pay attention. So I've done that one. That's the back. So let's go back here, and I'm going to do it again. Now, what you do want to do on this back page, because it's a little wider of a gap, is you do want to hug closer to the page so it will lay better on the spine. I'll explain that better in a second. Let me show you here. So see where the page is? When I do my punch, I'm going to line it up closer to the page than to the fold. So what that means is instead of coming this way with my hole punch, I went closer to the page. That way, when you come back here, you're not like super, super at the very, very back. OK, again, you can do this front one if you want to, but I'm just going to do these two and we'll do something here to make this super cute. Remember to 
I've not completed one of these. We're doing this together on camera. So when you when I get done, if you're like, nope, that's not for me, I totally get it. All right, now what we're going to do, turn this guy over. We're going to take our little eyelets. We're going to put them into the holes. And I had to force mine in pretty good. If you have a hammer in your craft room, it's not a bad idea to tap these with a hammer. I don't have one, so I'm going to use the handle of this guy. I want, the, I want to get them down as far in as they will go. All right. Now we're just going to squeeze them. So if you remember, I have a video showing you how to squeeze these guys. You're going to use this top portion up here. Okay. And I'm just going to insert this in and then squeeze. And something I do because I don't want to hurt my hand is I put this down on my work surface and I press it. Instead of squeezing it, I let the work surface do it and just go until it won't go anymore. You'll feel when it stops. You'll feel it. Now look good on the back side. See how that sunk in like it should? And then on the inside, it's barely enough to, to really get in there, but it's enough for you to feel the edge of it right over the book. You can also feel kind of when it pops. You just kind of feel it uh, go into the hole. All right. So you see we do have that gap, but again, this can be a great place to put like a title or the year or something like that. This is going to have a ribbon here, so it'll be just fine. Let's go inside and do something that I'm always bad about forgetting. Let's put some magnets in. So let's work on this back page first. Remember, this is the one we cut the piece away, glued it down here, and we have this piece we need to make a closure for. The issue is this is so close to our pocket that we need to edit this now to make it work. I'm just going to extend it and I'm going to show you what my plan is. I've cut a piece of cardstock that is six and a quarter, see the same height, by three inches. And we're going to fold this and kind of sandwich it on. Let me show you what we're going to do. So let me close this up for a second. And I am using the 49 and Market cardstock so it will match. All right, so I'm going to put this guy into my scoreboard and we're going to score him in half at an inch and a half. And this cardstock's thick and where I'm using it, I think I am gonna score both sides just so I can get a good easy score, a good easy fold. All right, again, I'm gonna use my bone folder to my advantage, turn this over, use that edge and crease this down. All right, now before I put it on, I have this idea. <laughs> I want to treat this like a tab. You know, we've made tabs before by folding over cardstock and then punching the corners. I'm not sure what corner I want to use. I think I'm just going to use a corner rounder. I could use stub or scallop. I could use angle, but I think corner is a safe bet for the whole book. So I'm going to use the half inch corner punch and just punch the folded edge of the paper because I want it to do like that. Okay. Now this guy is going to be attached onto that page. Now, I could do something to my advantage here. I could put my magnet inside, one of my magnets inside of here, close this down, and then have my other magnet here. The reason I don't want to do that is because this is thick cardstock, and I'm using Cartabella paper, which is also very thick. And if I put the magnet inside here, and then I put a piece of paper here, it's really going to put a lot of distance between this magnet and this one, because I'll also cover it here, right? So all I'm going to do here is sandwich this on and glue it straight down, just like that. So I'm going to lay this guy down, line up one end, then I'm going to flip this so that it just sandwiches our page Put that down like that. So all we've done is extended our page, but it also gives it some good stability here because this is a nice piece to be opening over and over again. And it extends, this gives us a little more um, decorator room. Also, it now overlaps enough for us to add a magnet. I really like how that looks. I think this is going to work out great. I also think it'll be fun to decorate this as a separate piece to give us some more um, color. All right, so I'm going to use big magnets. Now, why? I normally use small magnets in these albums. The thing about 49 and Market albums is their pages are thick, and I want to make sure this will hold up over time. So I'm going to use bigger magnets. So all you do is put a plus and a minus together. These are basic gray magnets, by the way. You put a plus and minus together, and we'll peel off and reveal the adhesive on one side. And what I want to do is I want to come here and I want to place my magnet here, leaving myself enough room to glue down paper around this magnet. That's not quite a finger width. And you know I like to have a finger width. So let's see if I can 
fudge it. I really can't. That's really where it's got to be. But we're okay. I'll be um, very careful to make sure I get that covered. So now we just peel off this backer. Putting in magnets is so easy and it, it seems intimidating, but it is so easy. It's literally just glue them down. So now what you want to do is make sure this guy is laying like you want him to lay before you press him in. Because once you do, that's where he goes. And now look, we have our magnet installed. Isn't that cool? Now it's super strong right now, but remember, Cartabella paper, super thick. And that's going to be a piece on top of here and a piece on top of here. And this will still be strong enough to hold that in. That'll be neat, right? So when we put something inside of our pocket, it'll stay nice and secure. All right, let's go to this page. Now, how do I want to do the magnet here? I want to add a magnet here to close over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my magnet to this side so I don't have to kind of float in the middle and hope I catch it. If I apply it over here, when I close this down, I know my magnet's where I want it. And again, I'm using the big boy magnets. You don't have to. You can use the smaller ones, but I do know how thick my paper is. So I'm just trying to hedge my bed a little bit. Peel off the back. Aren't y'all proud that we're not doing a magnet implant because I'm known for that? <laughs> I'm doing, I'm pretty proud of myself for being ahead of the game. All right. I'm just going to, matter of fact, you don't have to do that. You can stick it to the back like that and then place this down. Now I'm going to center it here. I mean, I'm not perfectly centered. It won't matter. It won't show, but this gives me plenty of room to glue paper down around either side. And I'm just going to reveal this backer piece here. And again, when you close this, you want it to close where you want it to close because that's where it's going to stay. So I'm going to lay this down like so, nice and flush, put that in, and then I can pick it up. And now we have a pocket in here that will be magneted, closed, and protected. Isn't that cool? Now, I don't have to put a magnet here. I can if I want to. I think I'm going to wait because I don't really know um, if it needs one. Another thing in a spot where I really don't have to have a magnet, putting one in can cause these to compete. And I've already got these two pretty close together. They're not right over each other, but they're pretty close. There's, I don't think there's a need for one here. Now, when I finish, there might be, and we can always add one later, but that gets us really a good place on this album. It's a good place to stop. And I'll tell you why. When we come back, We've got a lot more work to do, especially the things I'm going to be putting in here. I cannot wait to show you how we're going to use this. So I hope you come back for part two for that. But that is part one. So grab yourself an album. We do have some of these in stock. OK, grab yourself an album and get your pages to this point. Now, this is Saturday night, the week before Thanksgiving, if you're watching in 2023. So you can expect part two of this to go up probably Thanksgiving day. We normally do a live show on Thursday and I'm going to try to make this where you can have this for Thanksgiving day to give yourself something to watch that night. And then we can do part three on the following Saturday. So you won't have to wait too long to see this one completed. So kind of be a little Thanksgiving project for you to enjoy. All right, you guys, thanks so much for being here. Do me a favor. If you're making this along with me, send me pictures, put it on my Facebook um, group at May May Made It and so did I or on our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. And until next time, bye now.